Hi folks, just finishing my tea. <clears throat> right, I'm going to go back to basics with this this one, how to paint uh, trees and skies wet in wet. So the first thing we do is to take a brush, I'm using the two inch hake or Ron Manson hake for this, and it's on a piece of uh, Winter and Newton 140 pounds weight, just give it a wet. Soak in a little bit, and then while well, that's uh, soaking in, we can uh, finish our cup of tea and work out what we're going to do. Well, I'm going to do a simple sky, I'm going to use my hake, but for the trees, I'll, I'll use a sable, large sable brush. <coughs> so, I'll use a bit of a bit of raw sienna just to. Uh, Wash that in, give a, give a warmth to the sky, all the way down. Very simple watercolour. Just get into the corners there. The paper expands, we can reclip it. Just give it a clean brush, and then we'll go in with a bit of, bit of blue. Just had some thunder and lightning. It's been very cold lately in London after the sort of spring coming coming to an end Look, just dot, dot it in don't work at it just put it in otherwise you'll find that it'll go green but it doesn't go green if you don't muck about that so nice and blue and then we can put a little bit of bit of cloud in so we mix a bit of light red with with that there are lots of ways of making greys for clouds you can use burnt umber and ultramarine, you can use Payne's Grey and alizarin. Just whatever, whatever suits you. But we're using the Ron Ransom palette. Uh, Ron Ransom was uh, was a graphic designer, worked in advertising as well, and he thought watercolor was was very difficult. But when he was made redundant, he'd seen some work by Edward Sego. And Seiko was one of our greatest landscape painters in the 20th, sec uh, 20th century, if not our greatest, but he was traditional rather than abstract. And uh, Seiko thought, uh, Ransom thought he'd take up uh, watercolor painting. But how do you learn? There, weren't, there wasn't a lot around about 30 years ago. Some help, self help back books mostly had illustrations of black and white. A lot of help they were and uh, I'm just letting that that soak in and uh, he, he came across the the Japanese hake and it's that sort of size it was it, it, there weren't so many hairs and it wasn't so long the hair stopped or the bristles goat hair bristles stopped short to the edge but it's, it meant that you could paint without fiddling around. You can't fuss too much with this brush. It just doesn't let you do it. Right, let's put it tight. Uh, so that, coupled with a simple, simplified palette, and there are hundreds of paints out there, but we he settled on the student range by Winsor & Newton, which are very, very good. I use them. I always have since I, I read his stuff. Uh, and, and I've got on my palette uh, Cabin Yellow, Raw Sienna, Lizard Crimson, Light Red, Ultramarine, Burnt Up, Paint Spray, and Burnt Sienna, all Winsor, Winsor and Newton pigments. They're more than adequate for what we use them for. I don't know why I've got a line across there. Uh, so I'm letting that soak in a bit. But anyway. He started with his brush and he found certain papers that he liked. Bockingford was one. And uh, oh, my bag in my waste paper basket. I keep my plastic bags going as long as I can. Multi-use. Um, and he, he came up with his simple, uh, basic big brush watercolour books and eventually videos. But sadly, one died nearly two years ago. Uh, but he was he was getting on a bit. He was in his nineties, but he showed a lot of people 
probably hundreds of thousands of people how to paint from the beginning as a beginner and produce passable work and that's what we do uh, right I'm going to dry that now before I start dry brushing now I'm going to I'm using my the mute on my laptop it now it doesn't entirely mute or it might but feedback on it please The papers that is critical when it's just starting to dry, the shine is starting to go off the paper. That's when you leave it alone, or you use your hair dryer to shortcut the drying process. So, what sort of tree should we? Well, let's put a bit of background in first. So, I'll, I'll use my sable. I'm not really um, a sable painter. I'm a hake painter. But you can use whatever you want, whatever makes a mark. So let's have let's have some uh, autumn. Just go through autumn, so a bit burst, you know. And we'll put in a using the size of the brush. Put in now trees don't go all the way down to the basement. They they're stuck up on trunks. Let's have a bit of shadow in there now. Bit of blue, bit of burst, you know. Assuming the sun is coming from that way. Maybe because I'm right-handed. Okay, so we'll leave that. Just a, just a word. We'll, we'll put some more next to it. We'll work along across the paper. Bit more burst, you know. A bit of burnt umber. And then we'll just carry carry that on through there. Distant distant ones. Put some shadow in. Here's a bit of Payne's grey. And that's a soak. Get that. All right. And we'll, we'll put a bit of background in in a moment. Just connect that up there. All right, I'll cover a little, little gap. So I'll put a bit of, bit of greeny colour on the top here. Because they do, well, the trees don't always go, they don't go really go brown. They go yellow, don't they, from the, from the lovely greens. Then you get your siennas sort of coming in there low down. The larger the brush, the better the painting. Okay, so I'm looking at a, a park load of of lovely trees. A bit of shadow away from the light. All right, we can put a, let's put a bit of darker umber in there now. All right. Then we'll go across and do another one of, of those. We'll just put a bit of a gap there, I think. You don't use the tip. Just the edge. The sables hold a lot of water, like the, the hake. I just have a bit of, bit of green. I've used a bit of cad yellow and a bit of, bit of ultramarine. Just put some of that in there. Right, 
Okay. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to put some blue behind that, but I'm going to just put in a bit of a foreground. So, just a bit of dry brush, a bit of bit of green. Oh, and a bit of a bit of a bit of that. Bit of dry brush. And a bit of shadow then. I'll make sure I am muted. Yep. Okay. So this is just a simple, very simple landscape sketch. Nothing impossible. I'll give it a try. Let me crack on with it. Then we can. Well, I'm going to use this little hake, this Frank Clark hake. Finish my tea and go a bit further. So I have a bit of bit of sky colour behind there, but a bit darker than the sky, the, the red and the blue. Just give a bit of perspective to this. The impression of trees in the background. Could have done this first, but it doesn't matter. Right. Do I just okay, I forgot forgot to unmute then. I've just put the blue in the back. Uh, I might put something in there to cover that mistake up. But I'm going to use the uh, Frank Clark's three quarter inch small hake it's a lovely little brush but if you see these brushes they're not, they're not expensive get them they, they do nice things i'm not saying nice things i mean let's have a bit of blue a bit of burnt umber a bit of water on the brush make a sort of gray make sure all nicely mixed we can just start to Put in some scaffold. I don't think that's dry very much. All right, light's coming from there, so we'll just might do some of this with the rig. I don't know, it's just a bit, bit more with this one. We can have another one in there. Okay, we just work away on this. Put some structure. Something's got to hold the leaves on. Leave some gaps. anchors them to the ground oh, they're a bit too thick but I made a bit of a mistake there it's all conquer trees all oh, chestnuts uh, that'll do I'm going to put a, a, a bigger one, a, sort of a, we have a different one in there. Just a small copper beach. They're lovely trees, copper beaches, aren't they? Just to complete the, uh, this, this little scene. 
and cover up that mistake. Right, I'll get my rigger, finish my tea, excuse me. <coughs> now this isn't a demonstration of landscape painting, it's a demonstration of, of skies and trees. Painting very simply using two or three brushes. Right, let's uh, just uh, some go down. Don't want to overdo this, not too many. Some of the lot of the leaves have fallen off of that bit. My mate Alan Owen is very good at this sort of thing. A lot of people copy him. But he learned this uh, from uh, Ted Wesson. Okay. It's dark on one side of those trunks there. Yeah. It's a big one, that one. A bit of a mess of that. So I'm going to call this how to paint trees and skies, wet in wet. Although the the wet is only just for the beginning, but you can always re-wet the paper. But, but once it's dry, just use a spray or something, then you won't disturb your underpainting. Nice, a little bit of shadow coming along here. Well, there's some coming off here. Okay, well, there's a nice little one to be getting on with, and now we can just put in a little bit of. Uh, Bit of texture in the foreground. Nothing of any great consequence. Do your foregrounds as quickly as you can. Don't fuss and fiddle them. Okay, that'll do. Put a bird in. So I don't. Somebody will say, well, you, missed, you forgot to put a bird in. No, we we'll have bird where the light is. Uh, just little bits of this and that. That one's, that one's just changing direction. Another one up here. But see, you trying to always sign your work, even though this isn't going to ever see the light of day. Probably paint over it in acrylic or oil. Uh, right, my camera's uh, going to on there. Okay, the piece of paper is about 9 by 12 inches. Uh, let's measure it. Being British, we use Imperial. Uh, just under this, a metric size 30, 30 centimeters by 21 centimeters. There, yeah. Right now, you can you can go over that again just to strengthen it up a little bit. There's some some umber, a bit of umber, say. Just a bit of dry brush. On the uh, shadow side, a bit of texture there. Not a great demonstration, but uh, there's enough in there for you to practice. The birds are a bit naff, but uh, but there we are. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you get something from that. Keep it simple. Kiss. Keep it simple. Stupid. 
Let me look at that for a moment. You just practice these things. They, they look difficult. When you first try them, you've probably got the wrong brushes, the wrong the wrong paper. I looked in a shop today. My wife said there's a shop in Croydon, quite near where I live, a couple of train stops away. And I went in there, and yes, they had lots of cheap canvases and cheap, cheap sketchbooks and watercolour paper, but it's definitely not suitable. It, you, you will struggle. Don't skimp on your watercolour paper. Get good, get reasonable stuff like Windsor and Newton, 140 pounds. Taylor Rowney, uh, if you're going to afford it, Arches, but don't get it too rough. A rough paper is quite difficult to. So it's a work with unless you're experienced uh, how much water to put on the brush. But the Hague is the most fantastic. You can do anything with that. From broad sweeps to fine detail. Then the rigger. Lovely rigger, this one. Okay. Keep it simple, stupid. Bye-bye.